I'm not Taylor Swift. <laughs> Conversations. This is one really gracious, really funny, such a hardworking, and such a creative, powerful person. So, Taylor, thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it happened 
almost out of necessity because I, my first instinct was to write the treatment, send it out. I wanted a female director to direct it, and all of my favorite female directors were booked and busy, which is great. We love that. That's fantastic. And so I just figured, maybe I could do it. And, and so my first call was to Rodrigo Prieto, who is the incredible cinematographer who I cannot believe I got to work with my first time directing, and I learned so much from him. Um, and I've been very lucky to work with people over the years that just inherently watching their empathy or watching their sort of the introspective way that they perceive life and then reflect it on camera. Like Lana Wilson, um, she directed this documentary called Miss Americana and I... process of my life, but we would also just talk for hours, and and I learned so much from her, and I know I can always text her if I have a question, and I, I'm very lucky to have people who have helped me educate myself and learn about this, and I'm constantly still learning. But once I started directing music videos, I didn't want to not do it. I just, I found it incredibly fulfilling. And it seems like such a natural extension of what you do as a singer-songwriter. It is. It, feel, it feels like a, it, it felt very natural to extend um, writing a song and visualizing it in my head to, you know, making a shot list and storyboarding it and picking, picking who we wanted as the head of each department and who would help put this puzzle together. And it's been a different approach for each one. Um, we shot the Cardigan and Willow music videos. <laughs> So depressed when I bring up my work, and this doesn't. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we're all together, happen. just remember. It should happen. Like, have, I'm still curious, like, you have so much power, creative power, like, you really can fulfill yourself. What was it about film that isn't in music? That's a really interesting question. Um, I think that I, I always sort of thought that it was something that other people did, and I, and I just, would, would be around it, and I, I, in my head, I'd think, oh, I love that they did that, I would have done that differently, and I, I, so, so the lists of things I was absorbing became so long that eventually I thought, I, I, I really want to do this, and I think I, I think I had this imposter syndrome in my head saying, no, you don't do that, other people do that, who went to school to do that. I didn't go to school. Oh, oh, that's fantastic to know that. That makes me feel better. It's, and it's also- It's a pirate ship. It's a big pirate ship. It's been an amazing, don't you feel like it's such an interesting exercise in trusting your gut instinct? Because there are so many decisions you have to make. And, there, and saying I don't know or I'm not sure yet really isn't an option most of the time. It can be. It, I mean- I said the right way. I want to say really? that. Really? Because we had a phone call and you said, a director needs to have an answer every single time and know what they're asking. Maybe that's just being a female director. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Um, <laughs> I do feel like often, especially with actors, the best thing to do is ask a question back, maybe, sometimes. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, or also, like, um, doubt can be super powerful. I think I think that I definitely see that in your work. There's you have such an introspective um, sort of patience with the way that you approach no, no, humanity. Sure. No, it's funny. Yeah. Really? Oh my God, I'm the worst. Oh, I, I would never imagine that. You seem like you'd be the best. 
I'm very patient with everyone behind the camera and incredibly patient with everyone in front of the camera. Yeah, to me it seems like you, you put um, implicit, profound trust in your actors. And it, to me it, it reads as if you treat your actors as, as the collaborators that they are. Yes. And that's, so. I think it's very true with your piece. And we're going to talk more about that later. But your, your relationship with your actors did seem very symbiotic, to say the least. And I really love what was going on between you and Sadie in the story. And just the energy. Um, well, maybe let's talk about the, the, the song and the, and, the, and the short film. Because there's three, if you could entertain me, there's three things I'd love you to try to talk about. Yeah, definitely. One is, you've told me a bit about the journey of the song. It's really kind of magic. And I love how you, in one way, you don't control what you make. Right? or how it gets made, or how it goes out in the world. And then the song is another part of a story, point two, the way that you've taken control of the ownership of your work. And it's an amazing <laughs> Versus what you're giving someone else. 
Absolutely. I think that what I wanted to make was a film about an effervescent, curious young woman who um, ends up completely out of her depth. You know when you're like walking into the ocean and it's so fun, the idea of going out so deep that your feet don't touch the ground, but you could get swept away. And, and I wanted to show that, that um, extremely um, intense thing that can happen when you go out into the world and you're so curious about all these experiences and you're so, you, can, you know, this character, she's so idealistic. And that is actually one of the forces that I think brings these two characters together because I see him, I named them her and him, so, um, so he is a, is a character who has, has been through things, has had experiences with humiliation and setbacks and shame and bad news and bad luck, and these experiences have sort of um, made him feel like he, there's a disconnect between him and her, but these qualities of her, this idealism, this fresh, wide-eyed approach to life, just bounding into new experiences, is also such a draw. If there's something so, I wanted it to feel like them falling together was inevitable and them falling apart was just as inevitable. And, and the things that made them come together, these, they, I wanted it to feel like there were these forces at play. And, and they could not stop from colliding and they couldn't stop from being dismantled. So, uh, I don't know. You're I'm really such a writer trail. I... <laughs> You really remind me of talking to a writer director because you're just all about the story and you want to communicate with these people's inner lives and emotions. And that's thank you. that's so um, that will that will go that will go far. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I have this. I love this John Cassavetes quote where he says, "I don't. I've never seen an, a helicopter explode in the sky. I've never seen someone blow someone's head off." So why would I make a film about that? What I have seen is people destroy themselves in the littlest of ways. Oh. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
we assumed that this that he gave it to her, that she complimented it, and he, he gave it to her. So um, he's given her, he's taken a lot from her in the course of this story, but he's also given her something. He's given, you know, this dream and hope she had to be a writer. He, actually, her experience with him is what galvanized that into her, her life and her career. And so there are a lot of ways in which I do feel that both characters are protagonists because I spent a lot of time thinking about why they are the way they are, why they fell in love and why they fell apart. And, um, you know, the ending scene um, where he's, he's looking through a window, that's for me where he becomes, I think, fully a protagonist because we can all relate to being on the outside looking in, being outside, having regrets. You know, it's kind of like that, um, you know, that movie Stella Dallas, the um, Barbara Stanwyck, um, that last scene where she, she goes to, to watch her long lost daughter get married through a window. And it's a very different, they have very different motivations. And I, you know how that character feels because as she's walking away, her eyes are filled with tears and she's grinning and you know that she's proud that even though she wasn't there for her daughter, she was able to, some, you know, whatever it was that happened in her daughter's life, she ended up happy at the end and she was happy to see that. I didn't want us to see his face as he's walking away. Because I wanted us to wonder, was he happy? To, was he just seeing if she was okay? Was he, like, was he about to walk in? But was he leaving thinking it's time to leave well enough alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've put her through enough. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll, we'll, we will always wonder, we will never know. <laughs> <laughs> what a great sense of uh, drama you have. I don't have that at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I always struggle, like, how do I make this interesting? It seems to just bound out of you, yeah. like electricity of moments. You're very good at Drawing. seeing, seeing, <laughs> <what you're laughs> and, and making. Well, communicating it is a whole different thing. That's not drama to me. That's like a lot of control and poise and hard work. And you seem like a truly deeply curious person in the best sense of the word. Like you're always learning and getting the sense. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, <laughs> I really feel like I'm at a concert. That's like Sure. Um, the best. Uh, the best. Um, yeah. That's great. Okay, I'm just gonna jump to bigger. Are you gonna do bigger films? Are you gonna do longer films? Are you gonna do feature films? Like, where are you going? I would love to. Awesome. It would be. Um, it would be so fantastic to um, to write and direct something. You know, a feature. Um, I don't see it being bigger in terms of scale. I loved, I loved um, making a film that was so intimate and um, with a crew that was relatively small and just a, a really solid crew of people that I trusted. Um, like when I was putting together this team, uh, the first person that I went to was Brandy Yang, who is um, our incredible cinematographer and DP. Um, and I really loved her work because she's so, just, she's such a genius at working with, working on film, shooting on film. And I had written this um, massive manuscript treatment images. I think I sent it to you. Yeah. Uh, this is so funny. <laughs> so I, you know, started my career doing a lot of music videos, so I've done a lot of pitches to musicians, many. And I'm like, okay, this is so funny. Taylor Swift wrote a treatment for herself that's like in depth, like so much more in depth than anything I've ever written. I was like, this is impressive. And this really gave me a little snapshot of how you must be, because that was a lot of work Thanks. for yourself. Thanks. Did you approve it? Obviously, you did. And it's weird. It's, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's so um, weird to write a manuscript like that, and I've done that for every one of my music videos that I've directed, and no one ever sees it. The, the world never sees them. They, it, it just, it's just for um, people. Your crew. Your crew. You want them to um, to want to be a part of this and to, to schedule and to give you their time and to give you their trust. And also, I was really, God, I just really wanted the actors to say yes. I really wanted yeah. Sadie and Dylan, and I just really I was like, I've got to be really persuasive <laughs> and thorough. I have to seem smart. <laughs> um, and and um, yeah, so basically, uh, I wrote this treatment, I sent it to Rena, and um, 
she just was like, immediately, I know what we're going to do. You know, we're going to shoot on um, Kodak Vision 3 500T for our interiors. We're going to go with Ektachrome for our exteriors. I don't, I don't even know what that means. I'm going to be honest right now on stage. I, I learned a lot from Rena, and she was, she was, she's just one of those people that I will always feel honored to work with, and, and I will watch everything she makes, everything nice. she's a part of. Um, she recommended Saul Germain, who's here um, with us today, and he, he produced, um, he produced the film, and he really um, was such a, such an amazing sort of guardian angel guide through shooting in New York. It's really special to be at the Tribeca Film Festival because we shot a lot of this in Tribeca. Being on set with you and crew and shooting and being on set. I'm oh, it was so happy. fantastic. Yeah. It was such a fulfilling experience. And then on top of that, I'm also really secret agenty about people not finding out what we're making while we're making it. <laughs> So everything was code words and just writing things in codes that only certain people knew. And I, because I'm so weird, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, and and while you were making phone call, I was working with Aaron trying to get music for my film, and Aaron would be like, "I'm working on something." <laughs> <laughs> Such a tell. And I was like, uh, I forgot what I used. I joke with him every day, like it's. The Beatles are getting back together. <laughs> it was you. Yeah, so, we, so being on set, you know, I'm, I'm mostly walking around just making sure that everything we're doing is right. I have this amazing set designer, Ethan Tobin, who I think like maybe can read minds. He's so talented. I can't believe I get to be around these people at all. I feel like a contest winner when I'm on set. I really do. Um, and then a lot of things, you know, there's also we're trying to, you know, move around discreetly and we're trying to make sure that um, that we can make something and then I kind of feel like a kid who made an art project and I just, <laughs> just want to be like, do you like it? I made a thing. <laughs> and you guys are so nice about it. You've been <laughs> wonderful. Sadie and Dylan about where their characters are coming from and just we'd have lots of conversations that made me feel that they were so they were they just got it. They got exactly, you know, Sadie has this um, versatility because I just really wanted someone who could go from that idealism and that unbroken spirit. And we see that it's so palpable when we first meet her, and I wanted, you know, I wanted to show their closeness with handheld shots. I wanted to be so close we could count freckles. And, and then as, as things transpire and, and things fall apart, I wanted our shots to reflect the remoteness that she feels, like this desperate isolation that she feels because her world opened up to this incredible, big, passionate, intense love, and then it just, all of a sudden, Overnight, it boiled down to nothing, and the floor fell through, and she just feels far away from all her friends in her old life because she's been in this adult, mature world that she never quite felt fit either. Because you know, the dinner party scene just kills me because she's just so she's so talented, <laughs> and it's just like the little micro expressions that Sadie will do that set her apart, I think, from just everyone else on the planet. And you can see her feeling uncared for, um, neglected in these tiny, tiny ways, but still trying to keep it together and, and trying to stay afloat, like, you know, in these, these very adult situations. Dylan wanted to work with so much because he has this electric charisma that this character needed to be able to get away with all the gaslighting. <laughs> Or, or just young people that I meet, and I'll have, 
I'll have like a 12 year old or a 13 year old break down to me like he's gaslighting her right there. And that's psychological manipulation. <laughs> you see her, she's questioning whether she really is overreacting. He's turned this around on her, look at her questioning herself. And I, it, it gives me hope for future generations because if I was 19 or 18 watching that fight scene, I'd be like, oh man, he's winning. He's winning. <laughs> screaming out, Gaslighter! Gaslighting! <laughs> and I was like, I feel really good about the younger generation. Yeah. So, emotionally articulate. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I think that might be a great segue to two special guests. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was 
exactly that. It was as the gaslighter first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it actually was, to be fair to you, I think it was Dylan. Um, I reached out to you guys probably in July to shoot in October, so we had a lot of time to talk about what we wanted to accomplish, and it was Dylan's idea to script out a few of these scenes. We scripted out the, um, just, and, and when I say scripted out, what, you're, what you saw them do, that's mostly yeah, improv. I ended up throwing it away after I yeah. No, we, yeah, it, yeah. no, it was a great, sure. it, was, it, was like a, it was like a nice template for us to realize, okay, they're breaking up, why are they breaking up? Okay, they're arguing. Why are they arguing? What was the catalyst? Um, and I think I hadn't decided whether I wanted to have these to, to break up the music and have these scenes, and I didn't know which one I would want to use. I wanted, and and I don't think that we had actually decided if this was going to be in the film the way that it was. No, I didn't think it was going to. So it, it, it kind of the naturalism that you guys had. Um, moving around this kitchen, having this realistic fight that, you know, Rena's in there with Steadicam, it's one take until the very end of the argument. We were, me and Saul and I were sitting behind the monitor just like, like punching each other. <laughs> <laughs> just the whole time we're watching them do this, it's like sparks were bouncing off of them or something. Like, you guys were absolutely blue me away, and, and I, I can't, I'll never forget. <laughs> it's such a complex dynamic, dynamic, like sort of like relational thing that like, you know, was always the real goal to achieve, you know, which was so exciting, because it's one of the hardest things I think to execute, because it, it almost, it, you sort of realize at the moment it can't, it's not something that can be written. Um, how much, how, how much, how people argue, how we repeat ourselves. We go in circles, you know, and you see that in a script, usually like, the producer's like, oh, like, why are they repeating themselves, you know? He says this, he says this like five times, you know, take it out, you know? And that's, that's what makes it though. It's, because you're trying to communicate. That's how the other person is hearing yeah. you say it this way, maybe you say it louder. Yeah. Maybe you say it with two words differently. Yeah. You're trying to be heard. It's the failure to communicate. Yes, yes, yes. It's so perceptive. <laughs> Um, so when I was watching it, I could really feel this like funny relationship between Sadie and Taylor through the camera, both back and forth to each other. Like I felt like you were performing for her, and you were watching her in a way that like only God or mother could. <laughs> I, felt, I felt like whoa, there's a tie here. Uh, but then also to you, there was a, there was uh, obviously you're playing a slightly antagonistic character to, to the heroine, right? But there's a lot of love and respect and sort of care presented to you even while you're, if you're doing things that are ultimately not helpful to this person. So it was, it was, it was a not good, I respected that balance, so that it had a real mature balance to it. But am I right at all about like, when you're watching her perform this story, it felt, I don't know, it felt like such a tie. It is true that most of the time that I was at the monitor watching Sadie, perform, I, I was physically clutching my chest. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> there would be, especially these scenes where, you know, she was bawling and had had completely gotten herself to this place where she, she was devastated. And everyone on set was devastated too. And we were all sort of with you in that moment. And you were, I think the, the physicality of how, um, excruciatingly painful it looked for you and felt for us as a crew it was so remarkable whatever you did to, to get to that place it, it blew me away and also every time I watch it it's actually hard for me to watch it especially when you're when you when you're crying so hard that it's concerning it's it, it's it's really upsetting in the best way and um, you know just I I do go on that journey every time I watch back I I'm so proud of it and, and so and all of it is down to this this the, the naturalism you guys had together the the, the, the realism of your chemistry the, it, that was it was all down to you too.
really. So thank you for trusting me to I'm just a muggle non-performer person. So when I work with actors, I'm just like so high. I'm like, oh my god, we can talk like this? And I'll... So it's, it's amazing. Just, it's, it's really crazy, it's so symbiotic, transformative thing, especially when coming from personal material, which I feel like this really is. So tell me more about working with Dylan and how did you measure that? Like, because you are, I mean, I, I'm associating you two in the story. She, she's your avatar in the story. Yeah. So, or what do we call her? Is that what we call her? Yeah. Uh, so what's Dylan? Or how did how that work? Like, you, I thought you did such a good job of, like, showing things that were negative, but in a way that, like, kind of, like, had a love and a respect. Well, did you guys talk about it in terms of directing the actors? We talked about this, I think. Yeah, the first conversation we ever had about it, you said to me, and I'll never forget it, you said, I need this guy to be likable, even though he, we are going to be executing some really, really unlikable things. <laughs> and that is... You said, I, I got it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, hey, man, no problem. <laughs> uh, no, but it, it, you know, it's, again, it's, it's such a, it's just like such a nuanced perception that Taylor has into humanity and humans and how we operate, right? Because it's not black and white. It's not, you know, he, it's, it's, it's not a, he's not a monster, you know, he's just a narcissistic, egomaniacal child. <laughs> reality television. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm obsessed with human dynamics. Yeah. So I don't know, I, I, I was just like, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and, and, and in contrast to Sadie's like beautifully pure performance, just so pure and, and, and you know, and again, uh, you know, not to tailor to uh, this, I don't know, I just feel like it was such a fit and the, the age difference and the, you know, it's, it's ironic because, you know, you know, there's so much youth that you feel from you, um, pureness, right? Um, but he is just, uh, you know, ultimately the child. No, I, I, I actually kind of inverted their maturity in watching it, because she, her center, whatever it is, your groundedness, even in your vulnerability, is so um, mature, I guess is the word. And, oh. and your character's thing was more spinning and- All over the place. <laughs> <laughs> It's a front of dreaming and guy, let's be honest. Yeah. You're, you're spinning in guyness. It's not easy. Um, so, can I go back to your commencement speech? I love your commencement speech. <laughs> um, I, think you, I think you unconsciously wrote a letter to your future director self. And this, I love that you said this to these young people. I, I like kind of teared up and uh, I was like, I gave you a big right on from my hot house. Uh, so she said this to all these people graduating. I love this. Let me get my glasses. Sorry. Because I'm not. No. In your life, in your life, as a film director, <laughs> you will inevitably misspeak, trust the wrong people, underreact, overreact on set with everyone in your it's going to happen. <laughs> Hurt the people you, who did deserve it. That totally happens. Overthink when you're writing and trying to figure out what you're trying to do. Not think at all. That happens. Self-sabotage. We talked about that already. That's so fun. And I, <laughs> we do it. You know, I, I, I shared, shared some of my doubts about myself with Taylor just immediately. <laughs> and she just jumped right in. She's like, oh yeah. And that surprised what, me. It was what beautiful. What are your toxic traits? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're going to create a reality where only your experience exists. Ruin perfectly good moments for yourself and others. Deny any wrongdoing. Not take the steps to make it right. Feel very guilty. Let the guilt eat at you. Hit rock bottom. Finally address the pain you caused. Try to do better next time. Rinse, repeat. And I'm not going to lie. These mistakes will cause you to lose things. What a beautiful thing to say about you.
me kind of stepping out of what it is that I usually do, which is writing songs and singing them. Um, <laughs> it, is, it is this kind of um, vulnerable moment where you're sort of on the precipice of trying something new and just really hoping that you do everything perfectly, but it is important to remind yourself that you shouldn't do everything perfectly because you need to learn, you need to grow. I'm also extremely aware of, of my privilege when it comes to being a female filmmaker because I'm, you know, I, I was able to finance this film myself. That's, that's not, <laughs> and, and so I think you ha I, I have to constantly be aware that it's, it's as, as much of a exciting challenge as it is for me to be doing something new, I also understand that it's still extremely hard for women to make films and just keeping, always keeping one eye on that reality and realizing how lucky I am to even get to go near a camera in this yeah. way. Yeah. That was really great that you just said that. That's really Thanks. true. That's really, that's really so important to acknowledge and I think empowering to all, the, all everyone to acknowledge that. Um, in terms of losing things, what you said, yeah. um, you know, you, you will lose things in life. Um, I'm in this situation standing on this stage talking about a short film that I'm incredibly proud of because I lost all of my work. I was not able to own my work and I had wanted to since I can remember. And that was like, it was a very hard time for me. Um, and I think that when I was talking about losing things and, and it doesn't mean just losing, it's because a lot of my hardest moments and moments of extreme grief or loss um, were galvanized into what my life looks like now and I'm very happy with where my life is now, getting to create with people like you, and getting to speak with someone like you, who honestly, just, again, thank you. Um, <laughs> it all comes from something that was, that, was, that was hard to go through. You know, the, the, the kind of journey that Sadie's character is on is very reminiscent of experiences I've had. And, um, and I think that one thing that I've learned throughout this whole process is to really lean on the support of people who believe in you. And, and I wouldn't be re redoing my music, making these, these visuals, this short film wouldn't have happened if, if fans hadn't cared about and a song on the album that was never a single because the label was never gonna pick it. And, and, and me saying in an interview, oh, you know, it originally had like six or seven extra verses, it was originally 10 minutes long, and you guys just wouldn't let it go. <laughs> I've promoted so many albums, went on so many tours, tried to move past the Red Album, and every time I would talk to you, I do, anytime I'm doing a live stream, every time there's a Q&A, every time there's a meet and greet, there's, uh, when are you going to release the 10 minute version of all the time? So it's, it's, it's the belief in people who, who fiercely care about you that I think will get you through losing things, you know? Yeah. And you can find things along the way too. I mean, I mean you told me that whole story. It's, it's, I think it's such a beautiful thing that we don't control how the things we create come. We don't control where they go, right? And it's such a magical thing to happen. You know, the story has, a, the song has its own story, its own journey, its own like being, right? And I think you recognize that and you really honor that with the film and just every time I've heard you talk about it. Um, and then I love that the story is also about you just freaking taking ownership again in a real, you know, <laughs> start coming and I'm gonna change history by doing it. It's like really quite exciting. There is something that feels very magical about um, about sort of like once more with perspective. 
um, you know, timing and perspective it adds such um, such a it's just a better view. The, f the further you are back from something, the more of it you can see. And I know that if I were to have tried to make some sort of you know storytelling aspect in a visual way back when I was when I had this album out and I was feeling very fresh things, it just wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I just wouldn't have. And so I think that the this, this situation that I find myself in um, where, you know, um, people often greatly underestimate how much I will inconvenience myself to prove a point. I think I'm right. <laughs> Name of the next record. <laughs> <laughs> a little long. What is that? It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. We'll just, you know, make the initials, um, <laughs> shorten it. And, um, and and I think that where we are in the music industry and, and where you know there's so much happening in the music industry that's so exciting. Like, don't get me started on vinyl. I think the TikTok's really cool. I think that, <laughs> like fans have kind of subverted the label model of of. We, we sit in a conference room and we pick the songs that you're going to like, and you guys are like, mm, no, <laughs> no, and we don't want to do that anymore. And it's, it, I find it so radical and wonderful, and really, like, I'm just trying to sort of listen to the heartbeat of what fans want. It's, it's so exciting to, to got to do this for this long, to, to have, you know, this many memories, and I just, I'm just kind of, listening a lot and having fun and making stuff and it's just very cool that, that they want me to keep doing it. <laughs>